It is my pleasure to now introduce our second speaker of the graduation, my good friend, Anthra Gerg. Anthra is a fun-loving, sweet and smart 14-year-old that goes to Nashua High School South. She loves to dance and play and art, to draw art, and she likes to take AP classes in school. She also wants to learn how to skydive one day and wants to do something in the STEM field when she grows up. Anthara is the selfie queen. <laughs> she loves taking selfies and she loves using her phone. And she's always happy and makes everyone else around her happy and laugh. Please welcome my good friend, Anthara Gerg. <clears throat> Hi everyone, my name is Anthara Gard, and I'm a sophomore at Nashville High School South. Can everyone hear me all right? Yes. yes. I would like to thank Anisha for her powerful speech on suicide and for introducing me. Today I will be talking about education. Here in the United States, education is considered a basic human right, and it's uncommon for a child to not go to school. But in developing countries such as Ghana or India, not everyone is given the opportunity to receive an education, and it's considered a gift there. Today, I will be discussing some of the major issues that children face when trying to get an education, such as costs, gender barriers, qualification of teachers, family needs and child labor, and the journey to school. In addition, I will be discussing a government initiative that aims to increase educational opportunities for children worldwide. Globally, approximately 60 million children do not attend school, of which more than half live in sub-Saharan Africa. One of the major causes for this is the cost of education. Education is not cheap. The costs for school materials such as textbooks or transport, uniforms, it's very expensive and many poor families can't afford this. To increase overall enrollment, schools should lower their overall costs. In many poor countries, governments don't allocate enough money towards education. Some villages don't have a classroom to teach the children in, and some schools don't have basic facilities such as running water or bathrooms. To fix this issue, governments should allocate more money towards education. The Global Partnership for Education has constructed 53,000 classrooms globally to tackle this issue. Another issue that many children have to face is the gender barriers when trying to receive an education. In many countries, specifically Middle Eastern countries, Women are believed to have a secondary role, and people think that they should perform household tasks rather than receive a secondary level education. In many of these countries, child marriage is prevalent as well. Women are married off at a young age, and this prevents them from receiving an education and realizing their true potential. In a survey conducted by the Population Reference Bureau in the Middle East, they asked families, when given the choice, would they send their daughter or their son to school? Only 8% of families said that they would send their daughter to school over their son, a number which conveys the attitude that people have of sending women to school. One girl who had to deal with these issues was Malala. <coughs> Malala grew up in Pakistan, where she lived under the Taliban and it was uncommon for her to receive an education as a girl. She grew up reading books with her father and she loved learning. She wrote a blog under a pen name which became increasingly prominent worldwide. When the Taliban heard of her blog, they issued a death threat against her. One day, when she was returning home from school, a masked gunman shot her in the head neck and shoulders and injured two of her friends as well. After recovering, after being in a critical condition for a long period of time, she returned to school 
and was looked at as a role model by girls all around the world. One issue that children in developing countries have to deal with is the lack of teachers or qualified teachers. Some countries don't have enough teachers to teach their children, and the teacher to student ratio is quite high, which affects the quality of education for many children. Another issue people have to face is the lack of proper qualified teachers. Many teachers give inaccurate information to children as well. The United Nations estimates that there needs to be an increase in approximately 5 million teachers to achieve universal lower secondary education. The Global Partnership for Education has trained approximately 300,000 teachers in the past five years and is consider continuing to do so. Whenever I visit India, I see many children working on the streets as vendors or in houses as maids or servants. This brings to my attention the severity of the issue of the lack of education in many countries. Currently, I volunteer at schools which don't have many resources as part of a club called Sembuds. In addition, I volunteer at a math center, Thing for Fun, where I help children develop complex math concepts. I hold education in high regard as I believe it yields many societal benefits in the future. Many children, like the children I spoke of in India, are stuck in the system of child labor. Approximately 170 million children worldwide work as a child. These children who attend school and work often perform poorly in school and end up dropping out. And these same children are likely to remain poor their entire lives because they cannot get higher paying jobs because they have not received an education. Child labor greatly affects education and it should be reduced. Another issue children have to face is the journey of going to school. It's not uncommon for a child to travel a few hours each way to get to school. Children leave early in the morning and return over 16 hours later in the nighttime. This can be a critical issue for children who are malnourished, ill, or who have disabilities. In addition, when walking home from school, many children, especially girls, are susceptible to violence. One government initiative aimed to redefine education for girls is Let Girls Learn, which was started by Michelle and Barack Obama. This initiative recognizes the challenges that many women have to face when trying to receive an education and aims to increase the overall opportunities for women in many Middle Eastern countries. The Global Partnership for Education, which I've mentioned before, is also an organization which has attempted to redefine education in developing countries. To conclude, I have talked about the issues that many children face when trying to receive an education, such as costs, gender barriers, the qualification or lack of teachers, family needs and child labor, and the journey to school. And I have discussed the Global Partnership for Education and the government initiative Let Girls <coughs> Learn. Education yields many societal benefits because it allows children to promote overall equality and in the long run it can help battle poverty and disease. Education is a basic human right which every child should have access to. To, de to change the system of education, we must first demand a change and donate towards this cause. Thank you for listening.